Welcome back to TTC. Recently, we purchased and tested several no-name Amazon brand flashlights because we suspected their ridiculous lumen claims were, well, exactly that. And yeah, basically all of them bought from unknown brands were. But if you thought that was ridiculous, let me introduce you to the lawless world of aftermarket car and truck horns, of which we've bought many, ranging in country of origin from China to Italy, with a 10 times price difference between them as well. But mainly, more than anything else, we're simply curious about those advertised decibels claims. Well, and of course what it sounds and measures like when we wire them all up at once, because, you know, science. The year is 1883, August 27th, early in the darkness of the morning after 5 a.m., a large volcano by the name of Krakatoa near Sumatra in Indonesia erupted in a huge explosion. The largest explosion in that series created a 100-foot high tsunami in every direction. The eruption displaced five cubic miles of volcanic rock. 70% of the entire original volcano was lost just by the end of the day. Ash was propelled 50 miles into the sky, nearly into space, and the resulting volcanic winter resulted in a 2.2 degree Fahrenheit drop in global temperatures for a period of five years. This explosion was so loud, its pressure wave traveled around the world three and a half times and registered on barographs across the globe. Sailors 40 miles away from the eruption had their eardrums ruptured and suffered additional injuries. The energy released is estimated to equal 200 megatons of TNT, or roughly 100 of the Fat Boy bombs dropped on Nagasaki in World War II. Over 36,000 people were reported perished, with an estimated 120,000 people total, given the limitation of surveying at this time. Tsunamis hit as far away as South Africa, bodies often carried with them. People as far away as Perth, Australia, and Mauritius, which is 3,000 miles away, heard the blast. So was it loud? Yes, the loudest sound in recorded history, which was calculated to be 310 decibels. This is a 12-volt dual trumpet train horn for passenger trucks that we bought for $22. It advertises 600 decibels. God help us all. Now we're not going to go in any particular order other than to sort of tell a story, but essentially we're going to use a sound meter to measure the max decibels each one of these horns are able to achieve compared to their claims and compared to each other. Measure them from two meters away, which seems to be the most common standard. And starting first with the Hella Supertone Puck style horn, we're starting with this one because it's a brand you might possibly know, isn't particularly known for being super loud, this individual model here, and it is just $27, a nice baseline I feel. These are rated by Hella at 118 decibels at 2 meters. Let's check it out. All the horns in this video will use the same amount of sound reduction and editing, so it's not too jarring for you, but you can still hear the difference for yourself. So that's just 110.5, but we were curious if using a car battery source has a difference with the car on, being the alternator going, running that 12 volt horn at more like 14, 14.5 volts. So here's with the car on. One hundred and eleven decibels now, an increase for sure. We'll be using these with the car running from now on. Doesn't really sound very good either in my opinion, but we needed to be sure these horns were in the Hertz ratings within the range of our meter, otherwise we wouldn't be measuring much. That increase from 110.5 to 111, now it appears like a small one, but decibels are weird, which is why we're here today. They're measured on a logarithmic scale which means, for instance, 106 decibels is not 6% louder than 100, it's twice as loud as 100 decibels. 120 decibels would be 10 times louder than 100. That 310 decibel calculation of Krakatoa makes a bit more sense now. It's not three times louder than this little hella horn. In logarithmic math, it's precisely 8,912,509,381 times as large of a pressure wave. So let's get our hands on around 300 decibels worth of juice then, huh? This is the Z brand 300 decibel super loud train horn kit. This includes a high and low pitch horn, which when used together sort of help fill the gaps in the valleys of each other's wavelength to make more of a punch. This pair was just $17 on the old Amazon and well yeah, should be near Krakatoa levels of boom. Here's one horn from the pair. So 
So that peaked at 106, basically at or just under normal car horns. Here's both horns hooked up and operating. 112.2, that's quite a jump up, in keeping with log functions being weird and hard for people to understand, which sellers sort of capitalize on. Decibels don't add up traditionally, so that actually made more than you'd expect from two 106 decibel horns. That pitch difference perhaps coming into play, maybe one horn's louder than the other. Smarter people than me can weigh in on that. So that leads us to our rank chart. The Hello Horn is sort of our baseline horn from a known source and has a decibel rating at least here on planet Earth. The Dual Horn Z brand being 112.2 decibels makes for actually a 15% louder horn than this one. We measured at 111, but let's not forget the Z brand advertised 300 or close-ish in the realm of Krakatoa levels of loud, but instead it was 187.8 decibels off. So while the Hello was by our measure two and a quarter times off advertised, when we're just talking about how loud the sound pressure experiences, the Z brand was a cool 2.46 billion times quieter than advertised. So just over a billion times more dishonest than this one. Let's pump things up a bit more then, shall we? With 350 decibels, louder than Krakatoa this time. I'm perhaps not these products target audience. I don't have a need for earth-wide event type horns, but hey, if you want a loud horn and you're paying for it, then you should get what's advertised, we feel on this channel, plain and simple. Now this Tuam brand 350 decibel horn showed up labeled as a children's dinosaur egg toy, and they weren't far off from the mark on how this thing looks. It's certainly bigger than the previous two horns, and instead of a grounding cable, it uses just bolts to your car body, and hopefully that maintains a good ground that way. Let's see what this thing can muster. If you haven't read about this in the news yet, I think it's safe to say it's not 350 decibels. So 112.5, getting a bit bored of these 111 to 112 decibel horns. No, our meter's not broken. Luckily, we have some of these down here to shake things up. That's a 19% difference from the Hella, but 237.5 decibels off of advertised, which is really just 750 billion times quieter than advertised, so not too bad. Time for another name brand. This is the Viking Horns V621K Dual Trumpet. An $80 horn kit, and not only remote dedicated air pumps now, but two of them. They rate this twin pitch horn at 129 decibels, which sounds almost like play toy levels of decibels at this point after those last few, but 129 would be about eight times louder than what we've been playing with so far. Some of these horns call for quite a few amps and suggest some large gauge wire. We've been using 14 and 12 gauge wire and alligator leads to try and give them their best shot. The Viking uses a separate relay, which admittedly, this looks like a bit of a death trap set up for this type of testing. Not my cleanest build. We lift the horn off the ground to measure its output, and let's check that out. One hundred fifteen point seven decibels. Gotta say, I was expecting more, but in person, it's no contest compared to the others. The numbers say it's seventy-two percent louder, and I believe it. That is 13.3 decibels off target though, which makes for a 4.62 times difference. I'll admit though, on Amazon in the spec section, it states 118, so that's quite close there, but everywhere else in their materials on their website states 129 decibels. Still a bit off. Okay, next up we have the Yeet Tech. 150 decibel train style horn for just 18 bucks. This one feels like it weighs about a couple ounces. They say zinc alloy, but pretty sure this is plastic, and it's got one of those remote air pumps. All these look quite similar in design when you look at these online. We bought this one because it has super good reviews, which is rare among horns, but could of course be some funny business there. This same looking single long train horn type with red air pump can be found countless places like eBay, AliExpress, Wish, and they seem to all be slightly different, but often equally disappointing. So the reviews on this one had me curious. Here's how it did versus this 150 claim. One hundred and eighteen point two sounds a lot like the Viking, but yeah, louder. At eighteen bucks, this Yeet Tech about to yeet itself to the top of our ranking real quick. I mean, it sounds like an eighteen wheeler, yet feels like two ounces of plastic. 
That's pretty crazy. No, it's not 150 decibels, but it is 229% of the hella for less money and sounds better. That's 31.8 decibels off of advertised or 38.9 times. Still, not mad at that. Our next contestant is rated similarly 152 decibels for around 10 times the cash. This is the Mega Blast, a dual trumpet kit made in Italy. It's certainly the biggest horn on the day along with the most expensive and makes use of two separate relays for even more fun wiring. Let's see how it does. One hundred and nineteen point two decibels was crossing my fingers for something in the one twenties, but certainly the loudest so far. That makes for a horn two hundred and fifty percent louder than the Hella, which let's remember is magnitudes louder than simply using three of those horns. Okay, last up before we power these on all at once for the hell of it, the Volvov six hundred decibel twelve volt dual trumpet super louds. I think it's time we had a look at what those decibel levels mean practically for the average person. A conversation like we're having now is 60, 70 decibels. A chainsaw is in the 105 to 110 decibel range. A rock concert about 115 decibels. A jet aircraft is on the order of 140. Now sound carries to about 190 decibels, 192, 194 in our atmosphere. Beyond that, it's no longer really a sound wave, but a pressure wave pushing air faster than sound normally travels. This is called a shock wave, essentially the result of an explosion. Much beyond this is enough to take a human life, like a grenade without the shrapnel, and 550 decibels would be enough to threaten full global extinction of organic life. 1,000 decibels would be enough energy to open a black hole that could swallow an entire galaxy. So assuming you're watching this from your fallout shelter, let's take a look at the 600 decibel Volvov. I do like that this one has a pump and relay installed on the base, ready to go, super simple to hook up. Let's take a listen. One hundred and fourteen point three and particularly annoying on the ears as well. That means that this twenty two dollar horn is one hundred and forty six percent louder than this model, but also four hundred and eighty five point seven decibels short of advertised. And that means it is one point nine two seven five to the twenty fourth times off its rating. That's nineteen hundred trillion billions. Like if you have a billion of something, then you're like, oh, look. There's 1,900 trillion of those. That's how many times quieter this horn is compared to what it says it is. Was planning on ranking these, but really, yeah, it's the Yeet Tech. Nothing else is coming close here from what we've tested. And really, we've just looked at how loud things are here, which I assume someone buying these things are after. Haven't really tested durability, corrosion resistance, wiring, popping fuses. Of what we've looked at, it's really this simple for the money, this $18 horn, it brings the beans. And it sounds like a real horn too probably followed up by this $160 plus Italian one. Now let's wire all these up and just see how much we can piss off the neighbors in this industrial park. So yeah, headphone warning, obviously. So initially we only saw 119.7, which is curious. But after going through the peak hold functions of our gauge, it did see 131.1, which is beyond the 130 decibel max of the meter's range, so it kind of derped out a bit. Luckily, we can account for this. Being a log function, we can use the inverse square law and move this meter further away to still determine how loud the combined horns are at 2 meters. So we're going to move it 4 times further away at 8 meters and just do the math. So at 8 meters, that's 118 decibels. Using this attenuation calculator, that's 130 decibels from the source, less than the 131 it aired at before, but that's, that's pretty loud. Louder than we would have guessed, adding these horns all together that we've tested thus far, just using some math. Now is that useful information? No, not at all, but it was fun. Hope you also had fun with this one, as we certainly did, and perhaps learned something accidentally along the way. Click subscribe to catch stuff like this at least every Friday, and thanks for watching.